All right, so the idea for this video came about because as a Californian who lives on the coast, I'm often accused of being spoiled when it comes to weather. Like our, our winter highs drop down to maybe 60, and then summer highs just a nice moderate, maybe 75. And I have friends in Midwest or Northeast who say like, oh, you Californians, you don't know what winter's like at all. But I would actually say that there has to be a little nuance to that argument because I would argue that 45 degrees on the California coast feels colder than 20 degrees in the mountains or a drier inland climate that has a so-called harsh winter. So before anybody gets too angry, this is what we're going to be talking about throughout the course of this video. And it's the idea that when there's moisture in the air, it does actually feel colder. But then your next question that might come out of that is, but that's weird because when there's moisture in the air, it also feels hotter. Like if you've ever been to Florida, all the humidity in the air makes it feel much hotter than it actually is. So how could moisture in the air make things feel colder, but also make it feel hotter? That's the answer we're going to be looking for throughout this video. So let's just dive in here to Meteorology Insider. Why do moist nights feel colder, but moist days feel hotter? So have you ever noticed how during the winter, when it's humid outside, the cold feels even more bone chilling? This is my argument that 45 degrees on the coast of California, where there's a lot of moisture in the air, is actually colder than maybe 20 degrees in, I don't know, the northeast that's a bit more inland. So, but during the summer, high humidity makes the heat feel more oppressive. That's certainly the case as well. It's a strange paradox, but there's actually a scientific explanation behind it. In this post, we'll explore the science of why cold moisture feels colder and warm moisture feels hotter. So, it's, I've only been talking about how Californians maybe aren't as spoiled as people think because our colds feel colder, but it's also that our hots feel hotter. 90 degrees along the coast feels hotter than 90 degrees in the Central Valley. And to understand why, we're going to continue reading here. So understanding humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the air. The higher the humidity, the more water vapor the air contains. When the air is saturated with water vapor, it reaches 100% humidity, and any additional moisture res will result in condensation, such as dew or fog. Now there's a little confusion around humidity. The one that we use the most in day-to-day -day life, the one that you've heard of the most is relative humidity. And how you can think of this is, if you have like a parcel of air, there's only so much water vapor that that air can hold. If it's really hot out, it can hold more water vapor. If it's very cold out, it can't hold as much. So it's almost like, think of the air as a sponge. When the air is hot, you have a bigger sponge, it can absorb more water. When it's cold, that sponge shrinks and you can't hold as much water. Relative humidity is just basically the fraction of how much water vapor you're holding compared to how much you could hold. So that's your relative humidity. The percent of moisture that you're actually holding compared to what you could. I said that twice. Hopefully, the second time I said it brought, brought the idea home. So that's just a good idea to keep in the back of your mind as we continue reading here. So the effect of humidity on temperature perception. Humidity plays a significant role in how we perceive temperature. When the air is humid and cold, it feels colder than dry air at the same temperature. That's why I'm arguing 45 degrees in Santa Cruz felt colder than two weekends ago when I went up to Tahoe and it was 25 degrees. So this is because I also dressed a bit warmer. That might have something to do with it. So this is because the moisture in the air conducts heat away from the body faster than dry air. When the moisture comes into contact with our skin, it evaporates, taking heat with it and leaving us feeling colder. So that is the most important sentence of this whole basically page right here, and it goes on to explain it more, but what it's basically saying is that when it's cold out, there's more moisture in the air, and when that moisture touches your skin, it'll evaporate, but as it evaporates, it actually takes some of the energy away from your skin. It's actually the same as when you're sweating. Your body produces sweat, 
so that you get a little moisture on your skin. And then as that evaporates, it takes energy away from your body, which cools it down. It's like your natural air conditioning. So what this is saying is that when it's moist at nighttime, more moisture touches your skin, so you get more evaporation, and then you get colder. So it's basically, it's almost like putting your body into a state where it feels like it's sweating, even though it's not supposed to be sweating. So on the other hand, when the air is humid and warm, it feels hotter than dry air at the same temperature. That's why Florida does feel hotter than, let's say, maybe dry, a dry afternoon in Texas, even if it's at the same temperature. So this is because the moisture in the air makes it more difficult for sweat to evaporate, which is our body's natural way of cooling down. When our sweat doesn't evaporate, we feel hotter because our body's cooling system isn't functioning properly. So while more moisture in the air at nighttime allowed more evaporation to happen than would normally occur at nighttime because, well, you wouldn't have any evaporation happening at nighttime because you wouldn't be sweating at night. So it interferes with that natural interaction. But then during the day, it's almost like the opposite happens. Your body wants to be sweating, but there's so much moisture already in the air that it isn't as easy for that moisture or your sweat to evaporate. So how you could think of it is, I was trying to think of a good metaphor for this, but if you just think of like watering a lawn, let's use that, let's use, use that example. People know that they should water a lawn in the early morning when it's cold out because that's usually when your relative humidity is highest and there's a lot of moisture in the air and the water is going to soak into the lawn more. Now, because it's harder for it to evaporate. If you water your lawn when it's 90 degrees outside in the middle of the afternoon and it's a dry day, you're going to be wasting water because it's not even going to go into your lawn, it's just going to evaporate. So it's the same thing that's happening here on a hot day. When there's a lot of moisture in the air, your, it's not a, your sweat isn't evaporating as fast as it normally would, and it's your sweat that cools you down. Therefore, you feel hotter. I know that was a bit wordy, so hopefully that made sense. And we'll just continue, and then there's a conclusion to just really drive the points home. So the impact of wind, that's something else that can change how your body perceives temperature. In addition to humidity, wind also plays a role in how we perceive temperature. When there's a strong wind, it blows away the thin layer of warm air surrounding our body, which makes us feel colder. Conversely, when there's no wind, the warm layer of air around our body is retained, which makes us feel warmer. Now, first thing that this reminds me of is I've been doing cold plunges recently. Great way to boost your energy, boost your mood, and just feel good overall, especially at the start of a day. Um, but one thing I noticed was the, the cold plunge wasn't actually as cold as I wanted it, uh, as I would like it to be. Like I did a cold plunge in Lake Tahoe and it just instantly jolted my body full of energy and I loved it. The one at the gym that I've been going to, it's, it's certainly cold, but it's not, it's not like panic cold. And that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. But I saw one video online that maybe explained why it wasn't as cold as I would like it to be. And it was because when I was sitting in the cold plunge, I was just kind of like going as still as possible, almost taking like a stoic approach, just trying to focus on like deep breathing and just being very calm, not moving at all. But I saw this video that said, that is actually kind of the weak thing to do. Like if you want the water to be even colder, you should be moving around, you should be like moving your hands over your body and stuff because it wipes away that thermal layer that your body creates to keep you warmer. So the same thing happens with wind. If it's cold out, your body creates almost a little thermal layer around you. But then if it's cold and windy, the wind is going to brush that warm layer off of your body, just the same as I'm now doing in the cold plunge, and it makes it feel colder. So hopefully that made sense. So conclusion, in conclusion, the reason why cold moisture feels colder and warm moisture feels hotter is due to how the moisture in the air interacts with our body's natural cooling and heating systems. Basically, it takes what our body would naturally doing, would naturally be doing, and it does the opposite. At nighttime, we don't want to be sweating, and it makes it feel like we're sweating. 
In the afternoon, when it's hot and moist, we want to be sweating, but it won't allow us to. Or it's not as easy for it to happen. So when the air is humid and cold, moisture conducts heat away from our bodies, making us feel colder. When the air is humid and warm, it hinders our body's natural cooling system by making it difficult for sweat to evaporate, making us feel hotter. By understanding the science behind temperature perception and humidity, we can better prepare for the weather and stay comfortable no matter the conditions. All right, so basic summary there is a cold night in Santa Cruz that's right on the coast and there's lots of moisture in the air will actually feel colder than some inland location that's maybe 10 to 20 degrees cooler, but it's very dry out because we're by the coast, there's more moisture in the air because some of that moisture goes onto our skin and then it evaporates, cooling our skin down. Now the opposite happens on a warm afternoon. A warm afternoon in Santa Cruz also feels hotter than a warm afternoon in some inland location at the same temperature. Reason for that is all the moisture in the air actually makes it more difficult for our, our sweat to evaporate, which is our natural cooling system. So overall, that's why maybe coastal Californians aren't as spoiled as we think when it comes to the weather. Although overall, I would say that we are. It's absolutely beautiful here, never moving. So hopefully this video was helpful and thanks for watching.